The surprise August 28th arrest of the country's most powerful lady judge, Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwilu, and her subsequent arraignment before a chief magistrate court for, among other charges, bribery and abuse of office five years ago, was by all indications no small matter. There are substantial questions of law and their resolution will have a material bearing on the first respondent decision to arrest and prosecute the petitioner and the independence of the judiciary. And the spotlight now turns to Chief Justice David Maraga as he rummages through the 84 names of serving High Court judges before settling on the bench to seal his deputy's fit. <laughs> the judges have to be of an odd number. Public interest principle here. Deputy Director of Public Prosecution Dorcas Odor had applied for a three-judge bench. Experts, however, argue that Maraga could borrow from his predecessor, retired Chief Justice Willie Mutunga, who in 2015 tasked five High Court judges to hear the bitter dispute on the retirement age of judges, which affected, among others, former Deputy Chief Justice Kalpana Rawal and retired Supreme Court Judge Philip Tunoi. Tunoi was a few months later dramatically caught up in a suspected 200 million shillings bribery scandal which ended before a tribunal chaired by one-time DPP Sharad Rao. Rao admits that Maraga, and by extension the judiciary, is yet again in a catch-22 situation. The matter at the moment, which is before the chief magistrate, is whether those offences, which the deputy chief justice says, are not criminal, they are of a civil nature. All right? That now needs to be established in the court, as to is it criminal, and if it is criminal, are they established beyond reasonable doubt? But they are independent of Section 168, which deals with the removal of a judge. It will be very interesting to watch the dynamics of law, very precedent setting, and I think it will, it will involve a lot, of, um, um, a lot of borrowing from different realms of law uh, to package a well-reasoned decision. Uh, the more reason why then it can't be done by one judge, and therefore the personnel needed will be more than one, but uneven in number. In her petition, Mwilu dismissed the charges against her as an abuse of the court process with a singular objective of embarrassing her, with senior counsel James Orengo terming the charges as part of a conspiracy to secure removal of the deputy chief justice. Among the weighty and complex questions awaiting the bench is whether criminal proceedings can be instituted against a sitting judge and whether independent bodies such as the office of the DPP can be curtailed from exercising their constitutional mandate. The bench will either give a nod for Mwilu's trial before the chief magistrate or advise whether Mwilu's abuse of office claims can be directed to her employer, the Judicial Service Commission, as sought by her legal team. DPP is also an independent authority. So he says here that he's exercising his independent authority, which has nothing to do, he does not need the permission of the JSC to do that. The only person who is immune from criminal prosecution is the president. The issue will be a, um, a friction between um, the constitutional principles of um, innocence until proven guilty and the mere fact that there is suspicion of having conducted yourself in a matter not in keeping with the calling of the office and therefore whether that suspicion is enough for a person to leave office. Mwilu's tribulations relate to a 12 million shillings loan she allegedly received from collapsed Imperial Bank in 2013 under circumstances said to be inappropriate and contrary to bank customer relations. <coughs> Mwilu had blamed her tribulations on the September 1st Supreme Court verdict, nullifying President Uhuru Kenyatta's re-election in a landmark ruling that ignited immediate political shockwaves. We have a problem with our judiciary, but regardless, we respect, but we shall revisit. We shall respect, but we shall revisit this agenda. Indeed, it is the entire institution that is on trial. We would have preferred to see a situation whereby... Uh, the DCI and the, the DPP, the ODPP, present whatever material it is that they have through the Judicial Service uh, Commission first and then um, 
immediately the judicial service commission find that there is need to set up a tribunal that judge stands suspended they call justice the legal or philosophical theory by which fairness is administered and maraga will 